The murder of four Americans, including the U.S. ambassador in Benghazi, Libya on Tuesday, and the wave of anti-American protests and violence now sweeping the globe. For more on what happened and why, let's bring in the U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, Dr. Susan Rice. Dr. Rice, thank you for joining us. Good to be with you, Jake. So first of all, what is the latest you can tell us on who these attackers were at the embassy or at the consulate in Benghazi? We're hearing that the Libyans have arrested people. They're saying that uh, some people involved were from outside the country, that there might have even been al-Qaeda ties. What's the latest information? Well, Jake, first of all, uh, it's important to know that there's an FBI investigation that has begun and will take some time to be completed. That will tell us uh, with certainty what transpired. But our current best assessment, uh, based on the information that we have at, at present, is that in fact what this began as was a spontaneous, not a premeditated, uh, response to what had transpired in Cairo. In Cairo, as you know, a few hours earlier, uh, there was a violent protest that was uh, undertaken in reaction to this uh, very offensive video that was disseminated. Uh, we believe that, that uh, folks uh, in Benghazi, a small number of people came to the embassy to, or to the consulate rather, uh, to, to replicate the, the sort of uh, challenge that, that was posed in, in Cairo. And then as that unfolded, it seems to have been uh, hijacked, let us say, by uh, some individual uh, clusters of extremists who came with uh, heavier weapons, uh, weapons that, as you know, uh, in, in the wake of the revolution in Libya are, are quite common and, and accessible. And it, it, it then e evolved from there. We'll wait to see uh, exactly what the investigation uh, finally confirms, but that's the best information we have at present. Why was there such a security breakdown? Why was there not uh, better security at the compound in Benghazi? Why were there not U.S. Marines at the embassy in Tripoli? Well, first of all, we had a, a substantial security presence uh, with uh, our personnel. Not substantial personnel, enough, though, right? Uh, with our personnel uh, and, and the consulate in Benghazi. Tragically, two of the four Americans who were killed were there providing security. Uh, that was their function. Uh, and indeed, there were many other colleagues uh, who were doing the same with them. It obviously didn't prove sufficient uh, to the, the, the nature of the attack and sufficient in that, in that moment. Uh, and that's why, obviously, we have reinforced our remaining presence in, in Tripoli, uh, and why the president has very, been very clear that in Libya and throughout the region, uh, we are going to uh, call on the governments, first of all, to uh, assume their responsibilities to protect our facilities and our personnel, and we're reinforcing our facilities and our, our embassies where possible. But and why, needed. why would we not have Marines at the embassy in Tripoli to begin with? It would seem like this is, a, this is obviously an unstable country. Uh, this is a region where U.S. interests have been attacked in previous months. Why were there not Marines there to begin with? First of all, there are Marines in some places uh, around the world. They're not Marines in, in every facility. Uh, that depends on the circumstances. That depends on the requirements. Our presence in Tripoli, as in Benghazi, is relatively new, as you will recall. Uh, we've uh, been back uh, post-revolution uh, only for a matter of months. Uh, but uh, I've, vis I've visited there myself, uh, both to Tripoli and Benghazi. Uh, I, I was uh, very grateful to have a strong security presence with me uh, as part of our, our embassy uh, detachment there. So we certainly uh, are aware that Libya is a place where there have been increasingly uh, some violent incidents. The security uh, personnel that the State Department thought were required were in place. Uh, and we'll see when the investigation unfolds uh, whether um, what was uh, what transpired in, in, in Benghazi might have unfolded differently in different circumstances. But the uh, president has been very clear the protection of American personnel and facilities is and will remain our top priority. That's why we've reinforced our, our presence in Tripoli uh, and elsewhere. Look at this uh, map, if you would. There have been protests uh, around the world over the last uh, several days. And President Obama pledged to repair America's relationships with the Muslim world. Why does the U.S. seem so impotent? And why is the U.S. even less pow popular today in some of these Muslim and Arab countries than it was four years ago? Jake, we're not impotent. Uh, we're not even less popular uh, to uh, challenge that assessment. I don't know what, on what basis you make that judgment, but let me It let just me seems point that the U.S. No, government is powerless no, as, as, this, as this maelstrom erupts. It's actually the opposite. Uh, first of all, let's be clear about what transpired here. Uh, what happened this week in Cairo, uh, in, in Benghazi, and, and many other parts of the region Tunisia, was, a, Khartoum. was a result, a direct result of a heinous 
an offensive video uh, that was widely disseminated, that the U.S. government had nothing to do with, which we have made clear is, is reprehensible and disgusting. It, it, we have also been very clear in saying that there is no excuse for violence, there is, that we have condemned it in the strongest possible terms. But let's look at what's happened. It's quite the opposite of being impotent. Uh, we have uh, in, worked with the governments in Egypt. President Obama picked up the phone and talked to President Morsi uh, in Egypt, and as soon as he did that, the security uh, provided to our personnel and our embassies uh, dramatically increased. President Morsi, it took two days for President, President Morsi to say anything about President it. President Morsi has been out repeatedly and said uh, that he condemns this violence. He's called off, uh, and his people have called off any further uh, demonstrations and have made very clear that this has to stop. Well, you, you now, bring up and, and same, frankly, in Tunisia, in Yemen, and of course in Libya, where the government uh, has, has gone out of its way uh, to try to step up security and express deepest remorse for what has happened. We are quite popular uh, in Libya, as you might uh, expect, having been a, a major partner uh, in their revolution. Uh, what transpired outside of our consulate in Benghazi was not an expression uh, of deep-seated anti-Americanism on the part of the Libyan people. Quite the contrary. The counter-demonstrations, the outpouring uh, of sympathy and support for Ambassador Stevens and for the United States, the government of Libya and, 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 and the people on the street saying how pained they are by this is much more a reflection of the sentiment towards the United States than a small uh, handful of, of heavily armed mobsters. That certainly, according to polling, is, is the case in Libya, not the case in Egypt. And since you brought up President Morsi, uh, let me try to get some clarification on something. President Obama uh, was asked about the relationship with Egypt on Wednesday, and this is what he said. I don't think that uh, we would consider them an ally, uh, but we don't consider them an enemy. They, they are a new government that is trying to find its way. The United States has sent billions of dollars of U.S. taxpayer money to Egypt uh, over the last few decades. And by definition, as you know, according to the State Department, Egypt is a major non-NATO ally of the United States. Why would President Obama say Egypt is not an ally? Well, first of all, the president has been very clear and, and everybody understands that Egypt is a very critical partner of the United States, has long been so. That relationship uh, remains uh, the same. And, and the president wasn't signaling any change in, in the nature Was he trying to nudge Morsi? The president wasn't signaling any nature, change in the nature of our relationship. Uh, obviously, the, the, the president had a conversation uh, with President Morsi, and a very productive one, in which he underscored that it's, of course, the responsibility of the Egyptian government as host uh, to protect uh, diplomatic personnel and facilities, including our own. And we saw the President Morsi immediately after that took dramatic steps to improve the security of our facilities uh, in, in Cairo and elsewhere, and then went out and repeatedly made a number of very important and powerful statements condemning the violence and conveying the message that uh, however hateful uh, such a, a video may be, there is absolutely no justification for violence against the United States or, or other uh, Western partners. So what we've seen is uh, that the president has been incredibly calm, incredibly steady, uh, and incredibly uh, uh, measured in his approach to this uh, set of uh, developments. And his interventions, his leadership, uh, has ensured that in Egypt, in Yemen, in Tunisia, in Libya, and uh, many other parts of the world, that leaders have come out and made very plain that there's no excuse for this violence. We heard uh, Prime Minister Erdogan of Turkey say the same. We heard the Grand Mufti in Saudi Arabia say the same, uh, that there's no excuse for violence, that that violence is to be condemned, and that governments have a responsibility to protect United States personnel and facilities and those of all foreign diplomats. I know you have to go, but very quickly, was the president in that interview trying to nudge President Morsi, get your act together? No, uh, I think that the president communicated directly with, uh, with President Morsi uh, and had the opportunity to, to underscore our expectation uh, that, that Egypt will do what it can to protect our facilities. So that, that was conveyed very directly and the results were immediate and, and, and quite satisfactory. Dr. Rice, thank you so much for coming here today and answering our questions. Good to be with you.